Good morning, my name is Julia. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am going to attempt to make focaccia for the very first time. The recipe I'm going to be using is Bon Appetit's shockingly easy no need focaccia. I have a friend who swears by this recipe and I have been too intimidated to try it, but I am going to give it a try today. What I know about this recipe is that either you can let the dough proof slowly in the fridge for I think it's like eight to 24 hours, or you can leave it out at room temp for three to four. I'm gonna opt for the three to four hours only because why wait? I wanna get it all done in one day and doing it with the fridge option means that I probably would have to do it over two days. So I'm gonna try it. The very first step in this recipe is to activate your yeast. So it's about two and a quarter teaspoons plus, we're also gonna add two teaspoons of honey and two and a half cups of lukewarm water and let that sit for five minutes to make sure that it proofs. Otherwise, that means our yeast is dead. My water is in my bowl and now I will measure out my two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast and two teaspoons of honey. Give everything a little stir and we'll come check on this in five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let me show you what we've got. Nice and creamy. It's not super foamy, but our yeast is definitely not dead. Our next step is to add five cups of all-purpose flour and a tablespoon of table salt, kosher salt. I wouldn't normally measure my salt. I kind of just eyeball things like this, but yeah, and this is my first time making this recipe. I'm a little intimidated. So just gonna follow what the instructions say. The recipe says to mix all of this with a rubber spatula until a shaggy dough is formed. Seems a little bit dry. I do think I'm gonna get in here with my hands just to get all of this incorporated well. We'll just keep mixing. The next instruction is to add four tablespoons of oil to the bottom of this bowl and then sort of toss the dough to coat. So I'm just gonna do that right now. And in case you didn't know, four tablespoons equals a quarter of a cup. I have no idea why they would ask for this measurement in tablespoons when they easily could have just said a quarter of a cup. Get this on the bottom. Nice and smooth and then I will just turn this and get it all covered and as I mentioned I am gonna do this at room temperature so I will put a lid on this bowl and then I usually let my dough rise these days sitting on top of the fridge um, it's just a little bit warmer especially when it's cooler out outside and I'll be back in three to four hours Okay, it's been a little bit over three hours. This has definitely doubled in size. Well, it doesn't look totally like the pictures on the recipe online, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going and we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best. There's two things that I need to do. First, I need to grease this baking dish. This is a like 10 by 14 or 15-ish. I use it as a nine by 13. And second, I need to sort of fold this dough over itself to help deflate it. My hands are clean. This is my house. I do think it called for unsalted butter. I don't have any of that right now, so I'm just using what I have. And this is just to grease the pan anyway. It's not really gonna make that big of a difference. Next, I need to do sort of this deflating, folding, turning it into a ball. This is what the recipe says. You use two forks and pull the middle in towards itself. You turn a quarter, do it again, and do it one more time. 
Okay, I guess. Then we transfer it into our dish, which needs an additional tablespoon of oil. I'm not gonna measure this tablespoon. We're just gonna pour in. We'll do like that much. And then dump that. And in the video, they do sort of flip it around like this. I don't know guys, this feels weird. It just doesn't quite feel um, hydrated enough. But what do I know? Um, now, this has to sit uncovered for another one and a half to three or four hours, basically until it doubles in size once again. And I think the idea is that it's supposed to fill in the pan and take the shape of what it's in. So we'll see how that goes. Because this actually did rise, it, I think it doubled in size shorter than the three and a half hour or the three hours that I left it. I have a feeling that this is gonna double again in about the hour and a half. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Okay, here we are. It looks like kind of dry, but it definitely grew and I'm just gonna kinda move forward. I don't know if it's gonna turn out very well. I still think that I probably should have made it more wet when I started, used a little bit more water or a little bit less flour, but we can't undo it, so we're just gonna move forward. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350, and while this is preheating, I'm going to prepare the final step, which is making sure that it's just stretched into the corners of the pan, dimpling it, and putting a little bit of olive oil on top. Now I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit more olive oil. Give this a little bit of a spread. I have to say, I am pleasantly surprised. Um, I ended up, while it was proofing, I preheated my oven to the lowest setting that it would go, which was 170 Fahrenheit. And as soon as it came to temperature, I just turned the oven off and I let it do the last, I don't know, 45 minutes probably in that warm oven. So the outside did get a little bit crispy, crunchy, but the inside really is, I think, the perfect consistency. I'm not quite sure how it'll bake up, but we're gonna go with it anyway. It does call for some flaky sea salt to sprinkle on top. I don't have flaky, but I do have this packet of coarse sea salt leftover from when I tried to make those truffles, haha. <laughs> uh, so I am gonna sprinkle just a little bit of this on top. No idea if I did too much or not enough, so we'll find out. All right, going in the oven. Recipe says 20 to 30 minutes, so I'm gonna put it in for 20. One thing I know I'm gonna skimp on is after it's done, to serve it, you're supposed to cover it in um, melted butter with a little bit of garlic cooked into it. I'm probably not gonna do that to serve, only because I'm, we're just making this for us at home. Um, I thought about just doing it with some olive oil, but honestly, I think for this first time, I'm just gonna keep it plain as is. 30 minutes later, uh, it looks good. It does not look great. I did brush some extra olive oil on it. It didn't get quite as much color as I thought it would. I did it for the full 30 minutes but I did look at the bottom and the bottom was golden brown, so maybe I just didn't use enough oil, um, which is fine. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit and then I am gonna try a piece. Fingers crossed, we'll see how it is.
The flavor is pretty good. I wouldn't call it the best focaccia I've ever had, but for my first time making this recipe, not so bad. I like that it is really soft on the inside. We've got a nice sort of crunchy crust on the top and the bottom. I could definitely add more salt to the top and honestly probably more salt to the mix as well, to the dough. I do think that garlic butter would be really tasty. I'm also thinking of other combinations with herbs, with olives. Um, I do think that this is going to be something that I use in my repertoire. Good morning. After the focaccia, I think I want to make a bread that I am a little more familiar with. So this is no need crusty bread. It is so simple. It's four ingredients. You let it sit for hours at room temperature to proof, and then it's so simple to bake. I've seen many iterations of this recipe online in books. The recipe that I use is three cups of flour, half a teaspoon of yeast, one teaspoon of salt, and a cup and a half of water. That's it. When I say very warm water, I mean water that is hot that you can still touch. You can still put your hand in it because if your water is too hot, you will kill the yeast. I think I'm actually gonna add a little more water to this. This is one of those recipes that the measurements really depend on the moisture in the air. And I have found that the past few times I've made this, it has been a little on the dry side. It just doesn't hydrate super well. So I'm going to add a bit more water. And that's the thing with this recipe. It's a little different every time. It's hard to replicate exactly, and that's okay. And you shouldn't be discouraged if you try it and it doesn't turn out right, if it's, uh, you know, it doesn't rise or it's just really dense. Just try again. It's so simple, it barely takes any time, so I really encourage you to lean into it, don't be discouraged, and you'll get, you'll get good bread. I promise. All of the dry spots are mixed in. The only thing left to do is pop a cover on this, put it someplace warmish, and come back to it in some hours. The recipe that I followed instructs that you let it rise for anywhere from eight to 24 hours. I usually let it rise for six and it rises perfectly well, so we'll see. Sometime later this afternoon, I'll check in and I'll show you how we bake it up. It's actually been about seven hours, and let me show you just how much this has grown in size. In order to get this ready to bake, I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 450 degrees, and I'm gonna preheat my Dutch oven inside the oven while it warms. Next, I'm gonna grab flour, and since this is pretty wet, I'm gonna want quite a bit of flour on my surface here, just to make sure nothing gets stuck. And I'm gonna turn this out onto my surface. Get a little extra flour on here, and I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a knead just to get some of this flour incorporated get it a little bit less sticky, and help to shape it into a circle. If you've noticed a difference in the quality of this video and audio, it is because I broke my camera this morning. I don't wanna talk about it, I'm very upset. Already took it to the local camera shop, and basically it's probably not worth the price to repair it. So we are just moving ahead. I'm gonna let this rise on the counter here just for probably not quite 30 minutes. My oven is a little bit slow to preheat. I'll probably leave it maybe just a couple minutes past how long it takes my oven to preheat to 350. Now, I use a Dutch oven because I have a Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you do want to cook this in 
two pans and let me show you what I mean. I'm talking about using two pans to create a lid just like this. Uh, you could use round pans, you could use square pans like these. This is what I used to bake this bread before I got a Dutch oven. The reason that you wanna use a lid like this is the moisture that escapes while baking gets trapped inside when you use a lid, and that is what makes the crunchy, crusty exterior of the bread. So this is the way you wanna do it. Like I said, you can use any sort of lidded bakeware um, or create your own just like this. I'm gonna bake this for 30 minutes with the lid on and then remove the lid and bake for another 15 minutes just to finish and get a nice brown crust on the outside. You can sprinkle some cornmeal in the bottom before you put your dough in. That'll help prevent sticking. Personally, I've never had it stick with cornmeal or without. And lately, I've actually been just putting down a sheet of parchment paper because that makes it easy to pull in and get out and cleaning is a lot easier. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Experiment, have fun with it, see how it works. After 30 minutes, this is what we're working with. So the last 15 will be without a lid. Timer just went off. And that's our bread. Seriously, how simple is that? I'm just going to grab this out of here. This cast iron is super hot, but I'm just going to utilize the grills on my stove to let this cool. You don't want to cut into bread when it is piping hot. Uh, it's very tempting because it's delicious, but uh, basically the moisture will escape from your bread and then it changes the texture. You don't want it, so have a little bit of patience and enjoy. Hey there, today I'm going to make a honey beer bread. I made this a bunch in 2020 and I haven't made it that much since then, but it's super tasty, it's super easy, it's not very many ingredients, so I'm gonna whip some together today. I've already got all my ingredients pulled out um, and I'm going to start by mixing together my dry ingredients. That's three cups of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use a half cup measure just cause it's a little bit easier to fit into this container. So I'll measure out six of these. Teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna give these a stir just to incorporate. Oh, you know what? What I should have done very first is preheat my oven to 350. Next, I need a quarter cup of honey. And because honey is so sticky, I'm actually gonna just spray my measuring cup with some cooking spray, just to help it slide out of my measuring cup a little bit easier. I'm gonna empty in a 12 ounce bottle of beer. It does not matter what type of beer you use. The flavor will impact what your bread tastes like. So if you use something really dark and heavy, you'll have a richer flavor in your bread. If you use something lighter, you'll just have sort of a mild, beery, yeasty flavor. So don't use something you don't like the taste of, but really anything you choose will be fine. Just 12 ounces. You'll notice that this recipe does not call for any yeast. It does have some leavening action in the baking powder, but the rest of the leavening comes from the beer. The final step here is to add two tablespoons of butter, melted butter, about half of what we need total to the bottom of a baking dish. I have this 
somewhat oversized loaf pan. You can do it in a regular loaf pan, but it will be a little bit tight. So I recommend if you do that to just put a tray underneath in case any of the butter melts out or spills over. Uh, but we'll put about half our quarter cup of butter in the bottom of our pan, and then we'll put the dough in. I'm gonna just sort of push it to the edges of my pan so that it bakes evenly. And then take my remaining two tablespoons or so of butter and drizzle this over the top of the bread. And just on cue, my oven just preheated. So I'm gonna put this in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes and test it with a toothpick in the middle to see if it's done. I'm gonna pop it in for 40 minutes and go from there. I never wanna overcook, so I always check on the earlier side. And while this bakes, I guess I'll clean up this mess. All right, I just took the bread out of the oven. It's actually been almost 60 minutes. The center just wasn't cooking, but I think it's finally all the way cooked through. I'm gonna let this cool on a cooling rack and we'll give it a taste test in a little bit. All right, let's give this a little taste test. It is as good as I remember. Like I said, it's been a while since I made this. Mmm. It's got this light, beery flavor. Very mild because I used a light beer. And then you've got these kind of pockets of butter that are just so savory and a little bit salty. I used salted butter. Mmm. This is gonna have to come back into the rotation. If you haven't gathered by now, we are big bread lovers in this household. I've always been a carb lover. My mom used to call me the carbo queen when I was a kid. I could survive off of bread and butter. Unfortunately, you can't actually survive off of bread and butter. That is not a well-balanced diet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It really does help out my channel. I really appreciate you being here. It means a lot to me that you take time out of your day to watch my videos. So I just want to extend my thanks and gratitude to you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.